thank you. I'm uh, humbled to be included among the speakers today, and uh, I'm still uh, in shock that I'm here, and, and but humbled. Thank you to the organizers. And my name is Dr. Mohammed Zudi Jasser, and I'm a proud, devout American Muslim. I'm the founder of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy, whose mission is to provide an authentic Muslim voice advocating for the preservation of our founding principles of the U.S. Constitution, liberty and freedom through the separation of mosque and state. Our organization is in a daily fight against the ideology that fuels radical Islam and terror, political Islam. Make no mistake, terrorism is simply a tactic. We are fighting an ideology that has a goal. And more often than not, actually, it's a nonviolent goal, but it is a goal of political Islam. Chronologically, our organization was born out of the attacks of September 11, but in truth, our AIFD was born out of my family's fight for freedom and democratic values in Syria. That fight led to my family's and my parents' immigration migration to a small town in Midwestern United States called Nina, Wisconsin, where I was raised. In Nina, I learned about my faith and Islamic connection with God in a small mosque my parents and a few other Muslim families built in the 1970s and early 80s. It was there that I learned about the value of the separation of mosque and state. That small town mosque, immersed in the glow of a newfound freedom, taught me the clarity of love of country, love of liberty, and love of faith. Three concepts in synergy and not in conflict. Three concepts that my parents taught me that molded my unconflicted identity. That identity is what I think is the key to defeating global terrorism. It was a breeding ground for the values that I believe will ultimately bring Islam into modernity. By coming to America, my parents spared me and my sisters the suffocation of the corrupt, despotic environment that has stifled Muslims in the Middle East during the past half century. The so-called Muslim world is trapped in a binary choice between Arab secular fascism, the Nazism of the Middle East, and militant political Islam. We've seen this struggle borne out in Iran between the mullahs and the secular fascists that preceded them, in Saudi Arabia between the tribal despotic monarchs and the radical Wahhabis who control the law, in Egypt and Syria between the fascists of the Mubarak and the Assads and the theocrats of the Muslim Brotherhood, and in Pakistan between the oppressive secular national uh, Pakistani nationalists and the Diobandi radical Islamists. And that's just to name a few throughout the Muslim world. Policy debate in this world has been wrongly focused on this binary choice. There is a third option, however, and that is universal liberty. As freedom fighters, all of you know about this third choice. The people who live every day under the boot of fascists, whether they're theocrats or secularists, also understand very well the need for a liberty-based interpretation of Islam and government. But many have been deceived that the West, and, and many Muslims have been deceived that the West and secular governments defile their faith. My parents taught me that there is a third option from their first days, the minute they stepped on the soil in the United States. They abandoned failed Syrian nationalism, immediately embraced American nationalism, which gave them the opportunity of personal freedoms and liberty. They understood that America stood for majority rule, but the minority was protected like nowhere else in the world. The opportunities for all of us included that of learning an unfiltered history, not dictated by government, investigating and innovating from the essence of our philosophy of our faith, expressing our every idea, whether wrong or right, questioning every authority unencumbered by tribalism, fealty, or thought police, creating the ideas of poetry and music without censorship, and building free, liberal, Islamic, and secular institutions that will eventually leave a generational legacy for my wife and my children. This comfort, this freedom, came out of a common secular nationalism, an equality under one law, under God, under reason, 
where every citizen blind to faith, race, national origin, or creed had equal access to government. My parents taught me that that was a novel concept that was very consistent with our faith, but yet was new and was innovative as far as they were concerned from the environment that they came from in Syria. My grandfather, Zudi Jasser, a businessman who saw his businesses stole, stolen, confiscated by the Syrian uh, coups in the 50s, a newspaper man who, who went in and out of uh, uh, house arrest as he wrote opinions and editorials about the value of democracy and freedom in Syria and ultimately had to flee after my father and mother fled. But he visioned inside and outside of Syria for a greater Middle East that recognized universal human rights. It is in his memory and my father's who brought our family to the United States and for my children that I've dedicated my work for liberty and against Islamism or political Islam. My family's experiences in Syria and America have taught me infinitely about how a nation based in a unifying immigrant ideology with central principles of freedom, individual rights, freedom of speech, assembly, and most importantly, an establishment clause like we have in the United States can be the laboratory for Muslim reform and the modernization of our own interpretation of Islam, a new enlightenment, if you will. For I believe the majority of Muslims have already, through their practice, reformed their faith. But still, the books and the laws and the understanding and the institutions need to be brought up to speed. My understanding of American Muslim identity came out of this principle of universal liberty, and it did not come out of a vacuum. These were hatched out of what happened to my family in despotic Syria, a Western education, and an open-minded Islam. It also came as a result of growing up in the climate of religious freedom and the antagonism of debate in the United States. In recent years, however, being an American Muslim has come with many struggles and heartaches. The attacks of September 11, the recent Fort Hood massacre, and the recent exponentially growing number of radicalized Muslims in the West have instilled deep fear in my fellow citizens in the United States. And it has hit hard at my own understanding of what it means to be Muslim and what it means to be free, to be an American. I now realize, as much as I wanted to ignore it, I now realize that the struggles that my family faced in Syria have followed us to the United States. And we must face them here and now. The ideology of radical Islam is a significant threat to universal liberty, and it's a threat to every one of us in the West and the East. And it is incumbent on us to defeat it for our children. As I watched the soldiers' memorial services of the fallen from, can't get myself to say it, but uh, Dr. Hassan, I was hit internally harder than at any moment in my life, in my recent memory since 9-11, when I realized that at the core of the differences between my own psyche and that of Dr. Hassan is a central, soulful understanding of Americanism, an understanding of freedom, and the underlying battle of the soul of Islam and liberty. In fact, it empowered me with the very ideas that I believe are the antidote to the pathologies that create the Hassans, the Bin Ladens, the Awlakis, the Gadans, the Zawahiris, and the plethora of other radical theocratic fascists that populate radical Islam. The Islamist narrative tells young Muslims that America is a nation that is against Muslims and against Islam. It tells them that America's wars in Afghanistan and Iraq are a modern-day crusade to eliminate Islam. As a former military officer, I can tell you that's not true and can be further from the truth. But that narrative spread ubiquitously in Islamist sites around the world has served as a major, if not a primary, rallying cry for jihadists like Imam Anwar al-Waqi, who got into the mind of individuals like Nidal Hassan and Umar, and, uh, Umar Farooq Abdul Muttalib, the Christmas bomber, just to name two recent examples. Unfortunately, unlike my small town mosque in Wisconsin, many mosques in the West have become a breeding ground for radicalization because of this narrative. 
And we're not countering the narrative. We need Muslims to counter this narrative, and only Muslims can counter it. Toxic petrodollars feed the ideology of a militant, virulent form of Islam, which is not only political and anti-Western, but it is frozen in the medieval times and is the enemy of freedom and individual rights. Their Islam, their Islam is the friend of the tribe, the monarchs, the theocrats, and the fascist scholars, the so-called ulama. Our Islam, that of Muslims advocating for liberty rather than political Islam, has been choked off even in the West. Even in America, we've seen the penetration and the permeation of the ideologies of the Muslim Brotherhood and the Salafists, whose resources far exceed anything we have yet to muster in the non-Islamist, anti-Islamist group of Muslims. Many in the West, from media to government to universities, have actually facilitated the growth of the Muslim Brotherhood movement and their front groups and the ideologies of political Islam under the guise of political correctness. Little do they know that they have facilitated an ideology incompatible with liberty and Western society. Many of you in Muslim-majority nations know that the Brotherhood and its offshoots are not the only party or platform populated by devout Muslims. But in the West, the Islamists deceive the majority that they are the only Islam and deserve the special treatment of religious freedom rather than the deserved harsh critique of a political party. But I know better, and we know better. The only effective counter to this narrative will come from Muslims like myself and others who share our work at the American Islamic Forum and other organizations who can testify and advocate a very real, different reality. Muslims who, like myself, have embraced the freedom of thought to worship as we believe versus having to answer to the mutawa'in or the religious police as you walk down the street in Saudi Arabia or Iran. Muslims who are free to say that while the Quran is the word of God, the Prophet's life and time took place in a context that can be and must be reinterpreted in real time and understood in modernity. Muslims who believe that we are free to be human beings, to dismiss parts of his example as historical and innovate new ideas, not only in science, but political science, in the arts and in the humanities, that we're free to reject God or accept God as long as we abide by the laws of the land. What was relevant in the seventh century is not necessarily relevant in the 21st century. This is not heresy, as my clerical colleagues try to tell me, but it is the truth. Perhaps most importantly, Muslims who realize that a theocratic Islamic society is still subject to the foibles of man and without the protections of individual liberty is open to the corruption which comes with absolute power. Living in a country with a secular government that protects individual liberties affords Muslims actually a far better atmosphere to practice our faith than living in an Islamic society that is controlled by a theocratic despot, no matter how moderated the Islamists try to make their councils or their majlis appear. A secular government does not have to mean a secular society. That is what America, that is what the West taught me and my family. We do not live in a black and white world. We must show and teach Muslim youth what my family taught me in Wisconsin in my youth, that a secular government like America can be a beacon of liberty for religious freedom and devotional spiritual freedom. Yes, a government can stand against theocracy and governmental sharia, while at the same time standing for the free practice of Islam and every other faith equally under the law. These ideas are at the heart of the battle for the soul of Islam that is raging across the globe. As the contest of ideas grows in the struggle for the very souls of Muslims, the increase in the threats of radical Islam make me fear for the future of my children and what they will inherit. Islamist ideologues need to realize that America is not Europe. Americans will not tacitly accept the Islamist vision of the world to dominate our society as Europeans may be doing. I do fear for an increase in the distrust of Muslims within America and Europe as security threats mount. That distrust could quickly make it untenable 
for Muslims to coexist peacefully in non-Muslim communities. At the American Islamic Forum for Democracy, we believe that the silent majority of Muslims embrace the freedom that America guarantees and reject the ideology of political Islam that at its core threatens the very existence of freedom. We believe that this silent majority must take the reins away from the radicals, the Islamists and the victimologists, and define a new Muslim identity rooted in freedom of thought, separation of mosque and state, and a rejection of the construct of the Islamic State, or the Ummah. This needs reform, it needs real work, it needs reinterpretation, it needs vision, it needs a new meme, if you will, and innovation. The Muslim consciousness needs a civil war of ideas between liberty and theocracy. The silent majority needs to reclaim the very identity of Islam from the radicals and victim mongers who are a very vocal minority. AIFD hopes to ignite that movement along with many other organizations under a banner of liberty and freedom because it, is, because it is that type of ideology that will protect our society and our children that separates mosque and state under the concept of one law for every man, woman, and child. Because no matter what rights I have or I am denied, I will always be a Muslim. Even solitary confinement or torture will never take away my relationship with God. But what makes me alive, what makes me human, and gives me a vibrant soul are my rights, my freedom to create, to author, to speak, and to assemble. These rights, while given by God under God, are guaranteed and protected by government. Yes, only by a secular government. Once that government becomes an expression of any one faith, it becomes coercive and no longer a laboratory of genuine liberty. Just as the Muslim Brotherhood spread their ideas virally through booklets, DVDs, net clips, and postings, so too can we liberty activists spread our ideas virally to take them on in a real intellectual civil war for the minds of our children and our communities. This is why we rush to every opportunity to debate imams, and I've done so in Ohio and Florida, Boston, and elsewhere. This is not about assimilation. It is about liberation of the soul from the shackles of theocracy and fascism. This struggle is the same for me as an American as it is for Syrians, for Saudis, Iranians, and all individuals seeking free society. The nucleus of this idea, when presented in a fair playing field, in every nation will win in this civil war within the Muslim consciousness. The security of the planet and the future of our children hang in the balance. We must precede the radicalization of Muslims by working together as a global unit of freedom-loving Muslims and non-Muslims to lift up the voices of freedom within the Muslim consciousness. We must encourage Muslims to speak to power, to speak against theocracy, to speak against secular fascism, to question authority and be empowered to interpret our own faith. As Muslims, we must teach our children to believe in the importance and predominance of these ideas over political Islam and Sharia, over blind Arab fascism, Baathism, and other toxic ideologies. We must do this for liberty and for our own future. Lost in the battle for the very soul of Islam is your voices of freedom against the oppressors. Let our laboratory in America join your courage, your voices, your drive, and your needs, and together we can build a new future for a Muslim-majority nations that respects reason, that respects one law, and respects universal human rights. Our future will not be dominated. I refuse to allow our future as Muslims to be dominated by governmental sharia or the illusion of the Islamic State. Together we can feed off each other and exponentially augment our efforts, which are otherwise in a vacuum. That's what the Brotherhood has done. So too can we, freedom activists. Our Muslim Liberty Project at AIFD seeks to give a voice and platform for freedom-loving Muslims against political Islam. Join us. Let us work together to show Muslims around the world that there is a third pathway, religious liberty. Muslims that can separate political Islam from spiritual Islam. Let us teach Muslims from my children and their children on that liberty affords the freest practice of Islam, we dream of building a future 
through the separation of mosque and state. And with your help, we can bring this vision to reality. Thank you.